Today I have a few quick tips for leveling in hardcore DDO. I'm hoping this will be especially helpful for players who are new to hardcore. It's tailored for beginners to this event. So let's get with it with tip number one is to get your UI set up. So here I am. I ran my UI layout load to load my UI. So for those of you who don't know, you can type in UI space layout. And then if you want to save it, you would type save, then give it a name, whatever you want to call it. For loading it, you would then load the name, whatever it is. You can use the same UI layout across all of your characters on the Hardcore League. But since this is the first time that we are on the server, we want to make sure that we have the colors set how we want. So for example, I like to know when I do a killing blow, so I usually set it to a brighter color so I can see it. Um, I also like to have my buffs and debuffs display screen right, so I will click off some of these, like I hide some of these, and then I move, actually I don't want that consolidated, so basically buffs here, debuffs here, and then level up info is there. Uh, and you can look through here and change any of these to your liking. This is where you customize it. I also like to make the text in this chat box bigger, so I set it for that. Here's where you pick your dice. I, since beta, have been playing with the green, so that's the one that I use, but whatever you like. All of these here are useful to take a look through and turn the ones on that you like, but probably the most useful one that I would recommend is to toggle on your network status display. It's very important to know what your latency and loss, your, if you have any packet loss, it's probably not good for you to play at that time. And you know, your latency, depending on where you are in the world in relation to the servers, always good to check your latency before you play on the Hardcore League and make sure that you don't have any packet loss. But under gameplay, there are some they've recently added. So you can force healing on yourself when you cast negative energy as an undead. So you want, I, I turn that on. Oh, if you're having a lot of lag, you can disable some of the visual effect. One that I like to run with, usually off, is quest rewards based on class. Now, if you are a specific class and you want rewards for that class, like a trapper, and you want maybe to get some trapping gear, leave that on. But I always like to turn that off for the Hardcore League because I find that the gear selection is slightly better. And then you have to run through this zone it's really good to break everything if this is your first time here so cheats will give us a weapon if what the halfling said was true and i am just no going to take a quarter staff swings. it may be worth following as you take hold of the weapon feeling its balance you can't help but notice this. And so now Jeets has more he wants to say and you probably already and do this but now what you want to do is go through and break every box that you see and pick up all of the free stuff i am on the snowy side i am going to go to the bank if this were the first character i created on this server it would have all the unique items that i got from various expansions so i want to make sure that those items i have available to all my tunes so i want to go to the bank first before I do anything else and make sure I get those safe. You'll see that this character here will say, do you want to skip the Kortho Island storyline? And you don't have to worry about that because it will allow you to go back and do the storyline. It's not like you can never go back. And This NPC right here, this guard, will give you an item if you have any of these scores. I don't have a good charisma. Uh, but if you have Haggle, you can get an item from him for free. If you have 
salt marsh or keep on the borderlands you go into the gatekeepers grove and you can get to them right there but i am going to run to the bank that is accessible to every player whether you're free to play preferred vip anybody can run through the harbor to the bank in the harbor you don't have to have any expansions in order to do that so this guide is for everyone and I don't want to use just specific content. So I'm at the bank and what I'm going to do is put everything into the bank that I'm not going to use. Now I am only going to put everything into my character bank here, but if you were on your first character on the server, some of these items might be things that you want to have for every character you know, to have access to later. So you can put some of them in your shared account there. I'm just going to move everything into my personal bank here. Okay, so now I've got everything in the bank. We still don't have much money though. I only have five gold pieces, but that's enough to start. I've got the starter weapon, I've got my starter armor. Uh, something you have to be really careful of is falling, so, and I did not die, but you can see I took quite a bit of damage. I probably was very close to dying. We don't have feather fall yet, so that's why I'm demonstrating. It's very important without feather fall that you be careful because this ramp system here, you can fall off of this. So if for some reason you accidentally fall off here, that's death see that the character died so on hardcore league any character that dies is put into the penalty box you cannot access them in any meaningful way you could log into them but they are stuck in the land of lost souls which is a penalty box there's no mail there's no bank there's no ability to interact with anything so anything that is in your backpack on a character that is put into the penalty box is basically stuck there until the end of the event when they have the after party and then they open the penalty box up and let you out. So anything that you have, that's why I always go to the bank first, because if you accidentally die from falling like we just did, then you would lose access to any of the items that you had on that particular character. So we have enough gold to buy a cleric hireling from this vendor here. They are very helpful. Another hireling that is also extremely helpful to have in the early game is the barbarian. And that barbarian can kill many of the mobs in these low level quests. So I always recommend coming here buying that character and then you go through and you do the first quests to unlock the Korthos Slayer Zone. So that is the tip number three are the Wilderness Explorer areas where also these are known as Slayer Zones. These are great ways to get XP and loot quickly and easily you can pick up a hireling and run around and farm gold and loot to find gear. As a new character on the hardcore server, you won't have much gear or gold or not much of an economy in place. The wilderness adventure areas are great ways to quickly and safely earn loot. You can also, in wilderness adventure areas, earn other things. For example, in Keep on the Borderlands, if you have access to that, you can earn a amount that is account-wide. A special note, though, about wilderness adventure areas, though, I recommend doing them alone or with a friend who's the same level as you because they will scale to the amount of people that you have in the zone with you. And they will also scale to the highest level of the person. If you have somebody in your group who is level four, that will make the mobs in the zone much harder. So I recommend doing wilderness ex explorer zones by yourself or with a friend who is the same level as you. 
I would not jump into a pug with a full party of six people with multiple levels because the zone would then be very difficult. So I just went to the Gatekeeper's Grove and here I am, Keep on the Borderlands. If you have access to this content, this is where you would go to the Explorer Zone. It's level one and I'll list off some of the Explorer Zones. We have Corthos Island that is level one. We have Keep on the Borderlands that is level one. We have the Cerulean Hills that's level three. Wilderness Adventure Zone. We have the Waterworks which is level three Wilderness Zone. We have the Salt Marsh, which is right here. If you own the Salt Marsh expansion, that is a level three. Tangle Root Gorge is level four, wilderness zone. Three Barrel Cove is a level five wilderness zone. The Feywild is a level five wilderness zone. Searing Heights is a level six wilderness zone. Sorrow Dusk Island is a level 7 zone. The Isle of Dread is a level 7 expansion zone. If you own the expansion, you can get there. The Red Fens is a level 9 wilderness explorer zone. Ataraxia's Haven is a level 10 zone. The Restless Isles is a level 10 zone. And Barovia, if you own the Ravenloft expansion, is a level 10 zone. A wilderness explorer zone all places where you could go and farm loot for the early game what we are going to do is go to the borderlands we have our npc we don't need to pick up any of the quests because we're not going to quest we are just going out into the explorer zone to farm some of these quests for loot so we can purchase some gear and get an economy going because we have nothing. So I'm going to set my NPC for attack. I only have, I have 10 potions that I picked up and I have my, my one DPS spell. We have no feather falls, so you have to be careful about falling. And we are going to Try to loot some of these chests out in this Slayer Zone. Oh, the Ogre Rare is here. That's great. I'm going to get these crabs out of the way first, though. Okay. Going to have Byron rush the Ogre. No match for Byron. And we get to open our first chest. I'm going to pick up all of this stuff. We need it all and see. And we got a couple of good things. One great thing we've got is an ethereal ingot that will allow us to get a weapon that is ethereal, which basically means it's ghost touched. So that's a very good ingot. Those are the ones you want, unless you're a caster, then you would want the arcane ingots. But And then this here is an intelligence helmet. But the good thing about this, even though we are not intelligence, is that it has a green slot. And we can slot that with a feather falling Oh, so we got a feather, 15 feathers, and we can get a horse. So there is the first one. We got a false life necklace, which is not very good, but it's something. And then we got, if we were trapping, we got a really good pair of gloves for a trapper that also have a green slot. And like we said earlier about green slots, green slots are great for things like water breathing topaz and feather fall topaz. You get an uneasy feeling as you approach this ancient altar. We got another Helm of Clarity. We did get an Arcane Ingot, which is great. That lets you get a caster weapon. 
we got some gold and we got a robe. Behind so we're back in the city. We got enough XP to level up to level two. We did find one quail token and we could trade once we have enough. We can trade in 15 and get an account bound mount certificate that allows us to ha use a horse on any character. So it certainly is worth it if you don't have a mount available to you from an expansion to farm for one out here. Very easy to do. And you can see from what I did, it's reasonably safe. So I'm going to run to the level and take my level up to level two. So we looted an ethereal ingot and an arcane ingot. One of the other reasons that I really like to do this, when we got two quail feathers, I am on a caster build, so I'm doing acid and piercing damage. Piercing damage is untyped damage, and in DDO, untyped damage is force damage or kinetic damage. So that should help our DPS a little bit. And then the other thing, we have an ethereal ingot, we can use that to get a returning dagger. You could also get an ethereal weapon, but what I'm going to do is use it to buy a returning dagger. Now we have a ghost touch returning throwing dagger if we need to hit a lever. I highly recommend that. That's one of the reasons why I love running out here is because it's very easy. We are hunting the rare chest for a feather falling cloak. Okay, we got Pinchy's chest. Oh, I got a, a large shield. This is great. This will replace the shield that I'm using now. Even though I won't use the Hallowed or the Sacred, it's got a blue slot and it's got a Mythic boost, so that's very good. We also got another Arcane Ingot, which is very helpful. I could get another Caster Stick. Acid, since I'm also doing Acid and Force, I could get my Acid Stick now. But the Shield is a great find, so I can actually throw away that Starter Shield. And so now I, I have two magical items that I'm holding. And that put my armor class at 22, which is pretty decent considering that I'm only wearing a robe. Yeah, it looks like we got the rare white. In the brush. It's been neglected for many years. Let's see what his chest drops. Maybe we can get a cloak. And we did. This is great. It is a feather falling cloak, level minimum level one with a blue slot on it fantastic item it's bound to account you can switch it around on all your characters or put it on but that way you don't have to worry about falling and dying hey there thanks for watching to support the channel and help please like the video it also helps a lot with youtube if you subscribe to the channel it will help me to make more content if you do uh, another way to support is to donate through my PayPal. If you play DDO or are looking to play Dungeons and Dragons Online Hardcore, there's one place you need to be, and that is my Death Smile Hardcore Discord. It is a Discord community created for players of Hardcore DDO. Everyone is welcome. The server is open to everyone, and we are getting close to a thousand members. On the server, you'll find lots of helpful information and easy access to notes, builds, other players who are looking for groups and who are talking about different quests and how to complete them safely. You may also be a streamer and you can request from me a streamer role and I will give you a streamer rank and a custom channel for you to link your content so viewers can find you. We have discussion channels for all things hardcore, what quests to skip, what quests give the best loot, what builds are good for what, 
And if you are looking for any help, it is a great place for resources. The link is in the description below.